Welcome back to part three of week two. After these preparations, we are now ready to discuss the Hodgkin-Huxley model. Hodgkin and Huxley made experimental recordings on a giant axon of the squid, a nice experimental preparation where they could inject current directly into the axon. They, by a series of very careful measurements, they could deduce a model description. Thus, they went from their experiments first to an equivalent electrical circuit and then to a mathematical model, which I will introduce now. The giant axon of the squid, just like any other cell, has ion channels embedded in the cell membrane as well as ion pumps. In the case of the giant axon of the squid, Hodgkin and Huxley found that there are two dominant channel types. One channel is specific for sodium, and another channel type is specific for potassium. Now, if the channel is closed, it has a very, very high resistance. Basically, ions cannot pass through. If a channel is open, it's easier for the ions to pass through. However, there is still a resistance. The pore, the opening, is of a finite size. Hodgkin and Huxley found that the sodium channel, potassium channel, together with a third channel, which they called leak channel, which really is a summary of all the other channels that might give minor contributions, they could arrive at a very nice description using this equivalent circuit. So the idea is that the potassium channel corresponds to a certain resistance, which may change. The error indicates that this may change depending on the current situation, depending on whether the channel is opened or closed. Similarly, the sodium channel corresponds to a certain resistance and the remaining channels are summarized in some kind of leak channel. Based on this diagram, I'm now able to introduce the model of Hodgkin and Huxley. So Hodgkin and Huxley found the three different ion channels and each ion channel can be in a state open or closed. If it's open, ions, ions can pass through. It's, if it's closed, the resistance is very high. So we have a time-dependent resistance indicated here as an arrow. This is true for potassium, this is true for sodium. The leak current, however, is assumed to be constant. It's a phenomenological current that summarizes all other ion channels, all other effects that are not studied in detail. In their experiments, Hodgkin and Huxley injected a stimulating current into the neuron. Now, in the circuit diagram, this current has to go somewhere. It can go on the capacitor, it can go through the leak channel, or it can go through one of the other channels, potassium or sodium. So the total current is the sum of all these. It's the capacitive current plus the potassium current plus the sodium current plus the leak current. Now, for the, for the capacity, we know already that from the definition C equals Q over U, I multiply by U, C times U equals Q, I take derivative D D T U D D T Q. This is the capacitive current that I have already discussed last week. So let's put this in here. I have C D U D T for I C and C D U D T. C D U D T is equal to the stimulating current. 
and then I shift the three other ion currents to the other side. So I have minus IK minus IN A minus IL. Now what can we say about the currents passing through the channels? In the model, this corresponds to currents passing through the resistors. Let's take one of the resistors. From Ohm's law, we know U, voltage, equals resistance times resistive current, the current passing through the resistor. We are interested in the resistive current, so we have IR equals 1 over R times U. Now the total voltage is the voltage across the capacitance. This is U. So the total voltage U has actually two components. I have noted here batteries. This is the battery for of the potassium channel. Where does this battery come from? Well, this is exactly the reversal potential calculated from the Nernst equation for potassium. Because of the ion pumps, the concentration is different outside the cell than inside the cell. This leads to a potential EK. It acts like a battery. Because of the ion pumps, the concentration is different inside and outside the cell for sodium, which corresponds to the sodium reversal potential ENA. And analogously, I have a leak potential EL. So, in the Ohm's law, the voltage is the voltage at the resistor. The voltage at the resistor is the total voltage minus the battery power. Now let's use this first for the leak current. So I would have IL equals 1 over RL U minus EL, which I can plug in here. So I have minus 1 over RL U minus EL. The same reasoning can be applied to any other current. So for the potassium current, I have minus 1 over RK U minus EK. For the sodium current, I have 1 over RNA U minus ENA. This is sometimes called the first Hodgkin-Huxley equation. However, in fact, this equation simply represents the conservation of current. And every first-year electricity student can write down this type of equation. The difficulty for Hodgkin and Huxley arose from the fact that the resistors, RK, RNA, are not constant. They change. The change depends on the surrounding effects. It depends on the voltage. It depends on the history. So how can we describe these changes? Suppose I have a channel, and this channel is open, which means ions can flow through the channel. Even if the channel is open, it has some finite width. That means, even if the channel is open, it has some resistance. One of the resistance is a conductance. So even if the channel is open, it has a conductance. 1 over RK equals GK. I copy the U minus EK, but I leave a little bit of space in here because the channel may not always be open. 
the channel can also be closed. The conductance in that case is very, very different. Hodgkin and Huxley introduced a gating variable that describes the state of the gate. The gating variable n is time dependent. Suppose n equal 1, that means the channel is open, the current acts with its maximal conductance. It allows ions to uh, potassium ions to flow through and the conductance is GK. However, sometimes the current, sometimes the channel is closed and this is represented by activation variable n equals zero. If I multiply g times zero, the total conductance is zero, no current can flow through. The same kind of reasoning can be applied to the sodium current. It has a maximum conductance. It depends on the voltage. And again, there's a gating variable. In fact, there's a first one called M and a second one called H. And then I have to copy the rest. 1 over RL is GL. It's the conductance of the leak channel. U minus EL plus I, the applied current. Now, Hodgkin and Huxley found a description for the dynamics of these gating variables N, M and H. For each of the gating variables they wrote down an equation of the form ddtx x minus x0 over tau. x minus x0 with a minus sign means x likes to go towards x0. x0 is a fixed point. This fixed point is stable because of the minus sign. x likes to go to, towards x0 exponentially fast with a time constant tau. So this is a simple linear differential equation. There's one of these equations for n, another one for m, yet another one for h. A simple, a simple linear differential equation worked. However, Hodgkin actually found that the value x0 that x likes to take, the stationary value x0 depends on the voltage. Moreover, the time constant tau depends on the voltage. This linear equation described the behavior nicely, except that some of the delayed activations were not correctly described. And therefore, Hodgkin and Huxley proposed to use the equation for n, n equals n minus n0 of u, the better bad tau, and put n to the power of 4. Similarly, for experiment, in order to describe the experiments, m is to the power of 3. So, C D U D T. this is the first equation. The voltage is on the right-hand side. So the evolution depends on the voltage. It also depends on N, on M, and on H. And for N, there is an equation of this kind. For M, there is an equation of this kind. For H, there is an equation of this kind. So in total there are four equations which describe the Hodgkin and Huxley model. In the Hodgkin-Huxley model we have four equations. There's a first equation which represents the conservation of current. The first term on the right hand side represents the sodium current, the current that can pass through sodium channels channels that are specific, that allow sodium ions to pass through, if open. The second current corresponds to potassium channels. The third current is an effective leak current. 
and the whole thing is driven, driven by the stimulus i of t. Now for each of these gating variables, m or h or n, I have an equation. m likes to approach m0 with the time constant tau m, which depends on u. h likes to approach h0 with the time constant tau h. Both h0 and tau h depend on u. n approaches n0, which depends on u, with a time constant tau n, which depends on u. Now, typically, a typical shape of these functions is shown here. This is hand-drawn n0 of u. This would be the gating variable that controls the potassium current. So, if the voltage is high, n0 is close to 1, Therefore, the channel can open. If n is 1, I have maximal conductance. But it takes some time for the channel to open, and the time is a few milliseconds. So, the time scale here is milliseconds. The scale here is between 0 and 1. So, n likes to approach n0. This is n0. With a time constant of a few milliseconds, which also depends on the, the momentary voltage. The beauty of the experiments of Hodgkin, Houghton, and Huxley consisted in the fact that they were able to measure for each gating variable the stationary value, in, for example, n0 of u for potassium, together with a time constant tau n of u for potassium m0 and h0 for sodium. A very careful set of experiments, including some pharmacological blocking, enabled them to extract all of these parameters. Now, these experiments were the basis for the mathematical model, and con in order to connect the two, Hodgkin and Huxley went through an equivalent electrical circuit summarized by the diagram that I've used uh, in this part. So far for the Hodgkin-Huxley model, why is it so success successful? In fact, it tells a story. It tells us for each ion channel, for each possible ion channel, how we could possibly write down an equation. There are gating variables. Let's call them R and S. These gating variables will be described by a linear differential equation which is coupled to the voltage. An activation variable is one which increases with the voltage. An inactivation variable would be the other way around. For example, this could be S0 of U with some time constant, tau s of u. Nowadays, hundreds of ion channels are known, and in theory, it's possible to describe each of these ion channels using the framework provided by Hodgkin and Huxley. Now, in order for you to get used to the description of ion channels, I invite you now to our next exercise where we have simplified the dependence on voltage instead of some smooth function. We have a piecewise linear function which allows you to really address the dynamics of individual ion channels. Once we have done this, we come back for part four.